cool. Oh yeah, this one too, right? Yeah. I don't know if you guys saw that when that guy had that big cart right here full of that primed MDF. I actually ordered finger joint and he brought me MDF. Like MDF just keeps calling my name out. Like it wants me to use it, but that's all gonna change. Now I won't be able to totally eradicate MDF from everything that I do, but I am gonna start getting away from it. I do like it. There's things about it that I do like, but for the most part, I'd actually rather use real wood. Now this right here is a one by two finger joint uh, pine board, but this cove crown right here is MDF. You can see that nice primer on it, which it has its advantages. It has the flexibility to hug and contour to uneven framing and drywall. But overall, as an installer, I prefer working with real wood. Now, the reason I say we're not gonna eradicate it is because moldings like this, they only come in MDF, at least in my region where I'm buying this stuff. Now, there's a man by the name of Dave Rogers who was nice enough to come up from Austin to meet with me to show me some of the Windsor One products. Now, if you guys don't know what Windsor One is, it's basically like the elite trim board. It's like the best trim board there is. This is not a commercial for Windsor One. This is not sponsored. But Dave pretty much gave me the gospel on Windsor One and I got saved from MDF. So that's pretty much how the way I see it. I wish I could eradicate it, but I can't. And, and there are things I like about it. As a finished carpenter who paints my own stuff, you guys see me spraying a lot. We do a lot of brushing, especially on crown and base. It, it's that big advantage of already being primed. But all Windsor One stuff is already primed. Material that's one by from places like this is never primed. So that's a big disadvantage. Dave was nice enough to bring this up to me. This is a Windsor One sample bag and we're gonna look at that later in the video. But this is an awesome product, guys. I'm hoping that I can start using this from now on. As far as prices on this stuff, it's a little bit more. But the key phrase there is a little bit. It's not a lot more. I mean, the one by four that I paid for here, I think it's like $4 more per board. Not a whole lot. I mean, you could build that into your price. The one by six that I just bought here is actually only a dollar less than Windsor One. And that's why I'm kicking myself right now because I should have already looked up these prices and gone to another lumber yard. But it is what it is. I'm gonna get through this job, but the next stuff I buy for this job is actually gonna be Windsor One. And trust me, I see the comments too where you guys are like, this guy's a cardboard carpenter. He only uses MDF. You know, that really hurts. And even though I'm buying this wood here, not all wood products are the same. We're gonna talk about that a little bit too. So we're gonna head out now, go meet up with John and get started on some work. More than likely, we'll sit up on that little patio that I was talking about yesterday. I think that'll be just fine. So if you remember yesterday, we laid all of this out. You can faintly see the blue lines. I wish I would have known that when I was recording yesterday because I probably would have put some more chalk on the line. But anyway, it's right there. You can kind of see it. So what we're going to do here, typically on things like this, where it's a full wall, we have to put it piece by piece and we can't do any fancy pocket holes or biscuits or anything like that because we need to make sure each piece is fit to this uneven wall. So there's going to be bows and dips up against the side that we'll have to scribe for, hopefully not too bad. Um, the ceiling's really not an issue because we're going to hide it with the crown, so we'll just push that up. But there's been times where we've done like an accent ceiling and we actually pocket hold the whole thing together and John and I lifted it up into place and it was pretty intense. We were able to do that though because there was a crown that was going to hide the, the border basically. Well, since this thing is bordered everywhere, we can't really do that. If we just built this big unit and then just said, all right, we're assuming everything's straight and we pop it in, it's gonna have gaps all on the sides. Some of the straight cuts that we make would be tapered off in the corners where the drywall kind of tapers off. So we typically do this piece by piece. And since I use MDF a lot and we're getting away from MDF, I would normally just CA glue it. Now CA glue works good on wood too, but not as good as MDF. And for something like this, I wouldn't even try to use CA glue. So 
I'm following the insider, the insider of all carpentry, insider carpentry. And he has a 30 minute video on this right here. This is an infinity pure adhesive gun. So it's heating up right now. You can see it's at 228 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, it either does 248 or 356. This is for, um, I guess, hotter melts. But it recommends for the 30 second adhesive that we're using to go 248. And you can see the temperature just climbing up and I just plug this thing in. But basically what it is, it's a gun. This is the corded version. He has the cordless and inside of it, there's this thing that's gonna be really hot now. So I probably should have showed this earlier, but it's this cartridge of polyurethane hot melt adhesive. So it just says wood to wood, 30 second set time. So we're gonna to try to use this today and see what we can come up with. We've tried it a little bit and we used it on the last accent wall where we did the vertical shiplap, which I didn't complete the video on that, but I did post a picture on Instagram and we had some success with it. So what I've done, I've just cut this as a straight cut on the saw and then I can hold this up here. And you can see we have a pretty substantial gap that tapers off to the bottom. So I can look at that and see that's about a quarter inch. That's like 3 16ths actually, and just mark it up here. 3 16ths, mark that angle on it, and then I'll go cut this, and then I'll just put this as like LT left top. So when I go to make this cut, I'll just line up my blade with this sample piece. I'll do the same thing on the right side. All right, just to show you guys an up close, this is what we're working with now. We no longer have that gap on bottom, and you can see our back kind of coped effect cut there. So that's why we check with the uh, square scrap first. I'm just gonna set it right on the base. So for these, we kind of build in a little um, clamping pressure of our own by making them just a hair larger than what they need to be. So what I mean by that is we can put the glue on one end, put the glue at the top, and then we can kind of pull it out and then flex it in and then when we push on it we'll make sure I'll be down here John will be up there and we'll make sure that they're lined up as that glue is setting but before we do that if you look at this this is pretty rough over here on this side you can see that gap all the way up you can see there's a pretty big bump out in the wall right here so what I'm going to do is scribe that bump out out but first, I'm gonna cut a beveled edge on the side of this rail. I'm gonna cut that at 15 degrees so I can get it tighter just like we did for the bottom and top rails. And then I can jigsaw out of that easier. I can make some adjustments if need be, but we'll go ahead and dry fit this. As long as we got like a 16th pretty much close to the wall, I think we're, we'll be good. And that's fitting so much tighter now that we have that back cut and scribe on it now. And you can see, I'll try to get down here, that little bump right there is completely gone. And as a matter of fact, I'll put a straight edge on it to show you how this thing would rock otherwise. So that was causing the gap up top and the gap up uh, or down on the bottom. And with that cut out, it just looks like it's meant to be now. Okay, cool. So whatever you need to do to get good. It is? Yeah, that's pretty Nice. Yeah, you can see right there, hopefully this thing will focus. I gotta get a new lens cap, guys. This is getting ridiculous. But you see that right there? The board is thicker. Barely, but it matters. It matters enough to throw everything off and cause a lot of sanding for us later. It's like a 16th thicker, so we got that shim there off to the side. But the glue joint's gonna hold good and that's what we're gonna do to make this work. You can see the same thing down here. The shim is 
pushing the 1x6 out to make it flush with the thickness of the 1x4. Pretty frustrating. So we're still experimenting with this hyper. I think I need to get an, an extension cord so we don't have to unplug it. But check this out. It's been about a minute or two. And that's pretty crazy, guys. That is on there. It's on there so much that when I pull this, it's like pulling that um, board that's over there on the side. So I'm pretty impressed with that. That's exactly what we want. I don't want to use biscuits. I don't want to use pocket holes. I already explained all that. This is actually working good. It's a little bit of a learning curve to it, but it's fun to try this new stuff out and have just another thing in the toolbox, another method to get things done. Hurry, 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 hurry. But I'm actually pretty impressed with it. It didn't take us really any longer than it would have to lay this out and kind of scissor nail it, which I'm not really a fan of because I want these things to hold over time. And this bond is pretty crazy. So check this out. This is just loosely in there. It's not even shot. And it's all like, it's, it's almost like it's pocket hold in there. It's pretty crazy. And then what I like about that glue, if you look right here, there's some squeeze out, but it comes off so easy. Look at this. So squeeze out is not a problem at all for this stuff. And I can just pass over it with a razor blade. Just like that. Pretty clean right there. And then if you're wondering how I'm gonna handle the transition with the base right here, I just cut that with the multi-tool. And then that allows me to get this one by six base in here. And then that will just terminate right there. So we're just getting our base in right now. And we're gonna go ahead and do the crown and then rip our sheets down. And we had one outlet that fell right in the middle of this. So we kind of lucked out on that. Let's see. And it's just going to be perfectly split on that one by four. Then we have our line snapped up there. We're going to follow that reveal line to give us three and a half inches from the bottom of the top rail. So it matches everything, even the bottom of the base. All right, guys, I would say we made some pretty good progress today. We got all of the material installed except for the cove molding. I put a sample up right here so they could see it, but that's a half by half cove. It'll have a slight reveal right here. And it's just a nice little, um, just softens the edge there of that straight one by four. So that's pretty much it. I didn't really show you guys this. You've seen me do this many times, 